All right, good afternoon again, colleagues. Uh, welcome again to the um, second meeting of the LPSA Expert Working Group on Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, my name is Jörg de Fisser, and together with my co-chairs, I will be taking you through this afternoon's proceedings. We'll properly introduce ourselves in a moment. Um, but uh, first to get us all started, uh, a warm welcome from a rainy and chilly Cape Town. Um, here it is uh, three o'clock in the afternoon and I'm sure you, many of you are in different time zones and joining us from uh, various corners of, uh, of the continent. So it's, it's really wonderful to have this group here um, collected around a common interest in decentralization on, on the African continent. So a warm welcome to all of you. Um, first of all, I have to start off with a bit of an apology. Um, we, um, we're going to conduct this meeting in English, um, and unfortunately, we were not able to organize translation into French um, in time. It's something that we will certainly do in the upcoming meetings, um, and also we will, um, one of the subgroups will be conducted in French this afternoon. Um, but hopefully, uh, you will bear with us if we, if we conduct the plenary part of this meeting in English with the promise of, um, of organizing translation for, for the next edition of, um, of the, um, the working group um, meeting. So um, thanks very much for, for, for your consideration there. Um, so um, the uh, agenda for this afternoon is, um, has been emailed to you and uh, we're very fortunate to have the, um, excellent backup services and administrative support of, of the LPSA head office uh, in the form of Astrid Haas and Mila Davis and Jamie Boax uh, as the coordinator. So uh, we've all been very blessed with um, the excellent organizational backup for, for this meeting. Um, and we'll be heading into that uh, agenda in a moment. Uh, but I think in the meantime, just for the sake of all of us, having a bit of a sense of who is in the room, feel free to, you know, drop a, a greeting in the chat box and perhaps, you know, introduce yourself briefly if you want to. Um, we probably don't have time to go through, a, you know, sort of individual introductions um, in, in the plenary session because we also try to keep the meeting sufficient. And um, I, I have a, a promise to keep up, which is to, to make this meeting uh, last not longer than an hour and a half. Um, so feel free to drop your greeting and, you know, a brief note on who you are and where you're from in the chat box. I think that always helps for all of us to know um, who, uh, who we are meeting with. And of course, many of us have met uh, one another before, uh, either uh, live or in, in, in various online sessions that we've attended. And, and I really hope that uh, one day we will meet each other in person um yeah, either under the umbrella of LPSA or in any any sort of other events or engagements linked to the issue that we are concerned with, namely decentralization in um, in Africa. So the agenda is in is in front of you. Uh, we will uh, um, have a short up to use uh, the thematic breakouts discussions, uh, which hopefully you have started reflecting on. A little bit prepared for this meeting. We'll then go into uh, breakout groups, probably two breakout groups to just have a discussion on what ought to be the top group should be on. So that promises to be raised in. Uh, after that, we'll uh, come back to plenary and summarize and have a bit of a discussion on that in the plenary. And then we'll off with any other business and uh, is anyone else having a little bit of a difficulty three. yes i do okay yep uh, looking to introduce themselves one of them yep. i'm not going to start because that would be uh, impolite so uh, i'm the first 
Um, sorry, yeah, uh, this is Nicholas. I think uh, the too many interruptions in your system. Initially, I thought it's mine from here, but I, I could hear someone also complaining. So oh. there, there's break up and that we I can hardly hear you sometimes. Right, I think I lost the uh, the Wi-Fi connection for a moment. I think I am back. Uh, I see mm. cars not being ahead. So thanks. So um, so apologies for that. The the Wi-Fi here is sometimes a bit unreliable. I'm uh, I'm show you uh, the part of the continent that you are from sometimes we battle with those connectivity issues but i was just saying that um i thought it would be a good idea for the three co-chairs to introduce themselves briefly um we have been uh, nominated to uh, through the work group members uh, and, um and the three of us will be uh, will be doing that um and i'm very Proud and privileged to work with two formidable colleagues in this uh, in this job. And I'm first going to ask uh, Carla to introduce herself, uh, and then over to the others. So, Kai, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you, Yap, and um, welcome to everybody. It's great to be in our first meeting as the um, Sub-Saharan Africa Regional Working Group. Um, so, um, we are really happy to be able to work together, Yap, Jane, and myself as co-hosts. Uh, I think this initial meeting, we are going to be listening a lot to you. So I hope everybody came prepared with ideas and, um, I am, uh, a political leader. I am a consultant who works on issues of uh, decentralization, local economic development for the past 20 years or so. And um, we work mainly in uh, Africa and some in uh, Europe and the United States. And I lead the firm working on this, which is called strategies. So we are coming from a political perspective and a private sector practitioner perspectives. So I'm very, very happy to um, co-host this working group and to join the discussion today. I am not sure if Jane is on. If not, I'll hand back over to you, yeah. I am here. Oh, yeah. oh she's here. Over to you, Jane. Okay. <laughs> Jane, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Karen, yeah. Thank you so much. Again, I'm also delighted to be part of this exciting working group. My name's uh, Jane Kiringai. I know everyone was confused about the, the Gordon FIFA CDA, but, but, but that's the... That's the license. So I'm Jane Kiringai. Um, I'm an economist by training and practice. I've been in this field maybe for the last um, 30 years. I'd say 30 years. I started as a career civil servant, went to into development. development. While working with the World Bank for a couple of years with the European Union. But my last assignment and where I found myself in this space is starting at the World Bank, where I was in the decentralization team, leading in subnational financing and analytical work. Then after that, I went on to, to lead the Commission on Revenue Allocation. That's the, the organ in Kenya that really does with subnational revenue sharing and all worked, all matters to decentralization. So that's where I've been for the last six years. I completed my tour of duty on February this year. And uh, yeah, this is who, where we are. And I'm happy to that this pro platform provides the opportunity to share the knowledge, to engage and interact with uh, people with the same kind of passion and practice. So thanks so much. And I'm, I look forward to an exciting season ahead. Asante sana. 
Back to you, Jack. Asante Sana, Jane. Thank you so much for, for that introduction. And um, uh, let me add my uh, um, little bit of information on uh, onto that. So my name is Yaap Tafisar. I am the uh, Interim National Research Chair um, at the uh, Dalla Omar Institute at the University of the Western Cape in Cape Town. And my chair focuses on local governments and intergovernmental relations, uh, primarily on the on the on the continent. Um, so I am an academic. I work in uh, at a university, but um, I've always worked at the intersection of scholarship, teaching, and practice, and have done um, consulting and advisory services, uh, you know, for uh, national, international organizations. Uh, focusing on decentralization in local government. Um, I've done, um, I'm a lawyer by training, so that is my primary discipline, but I've always worked, you know, across other disciplines in political science um, um, and, and public administration um, and looking at the issue of local government uh, really through the lens of what contribution local government can make, particularly on the African continent, to um, to peace, uh, development, and, and democracy. Um, and I've been doing so for the last 20 or so years, uh, starting in South Africa with the introduction of the local government system here around the turn of the century, uh, and then increasingly also across, across the continent, uh, working on decentralization projects uh, in, in many countries uh, across the continent. Um, so that is in short uh, me, and uh, yeah, again, I'm, I'm very proud to work alongside these two uh, very formidable uh, names and uh, uh, women that work. It's all happened that we'll constantly swap and change, uh, and, and you'll Yeah, you you will hear from all three of us. Am I back? Sometimes my connection drops a little bit. Uh, yes. So, yes. Yeah. It's not <laughs> and I just forgot to say one thing. I, would like it to be. I, I I just forgot to say one thing. Donc, uh, uh, bonjour ou bonsoir à tous les francophones. Juste pour vous dire que notre équipe de um, the the co uh, host est uh, bilingue et même comme nous n'avons pas pu uh, nous organiser pour la traduction uh, pour cette fois-ci, uh, sentez-vous libre de d'intervenir en français et uh, on fera une petite uh, traduction sommaire. Donc, juste pour vous dire que euh, sentez-vous libre de vous exprimer soit en français, soit en anglais et aussi dans les sous-groupes, il y aura un sous-groupe où les francophones pourront assister. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Ms. Kawala. Uh, that sounded beautiful. Uh, thank you very much for that. And I wish I could do the same in French, but unfortunately, my French is not good enough. Uh, so I hope you uh, you apologize for us uh, on our behalf, and we'll uh, take care of that in the next in the next round. Um, so with that behind us, let us then move on to the next agenda item, which is the update uh, on the Lika uh, project that LPSA is running. A very exciting project, uh, basically involving another scorecard of decentralization for uh, for countries that that are being profiled. So for that, we have uh, Nick Travis in the room from LPSA, who's going to give us a brief brief update. Uh, over to you, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Jeff, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. I, I hope you can uh, I hope you can hear me well. Um, so so my name's. Nick Travis. Uh, I'm a consultant and, and public finance um, researcher. And for the last several months, um, I've been working with the, the LPSA and, and with Jamie Boex in supporting the rollout of the, the Logica framework. 
um, in a number of uh, a number of different countries. The the, the Logica assessment tool, um, which was developed by LPSA, is is a methodology for evaluating the subnational governance structure of a country um, in general, but also um, trying to understand the specific nature of the institutions that exist but sort of below the central government level that, that contribute to, to service delivery and, and economic development. Um, the, the methodology has a number of different components or, or modules, which sort of provide varying degrees of detail on the nature of, of subnational institutions, um, ranging from a sort of a relatively light touch exercise called the intergovernmental profile, um, which seeks to get a basic understanding of the of the structure of subnational governments and their nature, all the way through to a full assessment of the, the political, fiscal and administrative elements of, of subnational governance. Um, and as, as Yap said, a, a, a sort of a scorecard that, that quantifies the extent of autonomy that subnational institutions um, enjoy in, in practice. And, and really one of the key objectives of the, the logic and methodology is to assess the, the de facto or the real or actual situation on the ground um, in reality, rather than just um, simply reviewing the, the existing legal framework and, and so on. Because uh, often there are significant differences between you know, what should be happening and, and what actually is happening in, in, in practice um, with, with implementation of, of laws often lagging uh, you know, intent for, for one reason or another. So the methodology really tries to cut through the, the detail and get to the, um, get, get an accurate picture of the, the status of decentralization in, in practice. Um, and, and to date, we've been focusing mainly on completing the, the intergovernmental profile, the most light touch part of the Logica framework in a selection of countries in, in Asia and in Africa. Um, and, and as I mentioned, the, the IGP focuses on, on identifying the basic structure of subnational governance, um, the, the type of entities that they are, you know, are they fully devolved entities um, or are they more sort of deconcentrated in nature or, or are they perhaps a hybrid falling somewhere in between where they have some elements of, of devolution and other elements where central government retains significant control. These are the kinds of questions that we're we're looking to to, to ask and understand in, in each of the countries. And then we're also looking to to get a, an understanding of the basic set of functional responsibilities that, that exist at each level or, or trying to understand you know which levels of, of governance are are overall most responsible for delivering services uh, across a range of different sectors. Um, I don't know if I can share my screen. Let me see if I can. It says I can't. Um, I don't know if it's possible to do that, but... Um, it probably means that Astrid should maybe stop sharing, which would hopefully then allow you to share. Okay, let's see. Yes, that does seem to work. Okay, where are we? Um, oh. Sorry, one second. Yeah, here we go. So just to give you a sense of um, what I'm talking about here, we this is the LPSA a website, and, and this is an example of um, the example of South Africa, which was was recently completed and, and uploaded to the website. So, um, what we have here is a, a summary of of the profile that, that comes from the the uh, the assessment that was done um, recently. And so we have uh, a basic uh, overview diagram of the of the structure of. Of governance in South Africa from, from national level down through to, to local level. Um, and these bars uh, are color coded according to the nature of um, the institutions that they are. In, in this case, they're, they're fully devolved uh, entities. Um, and we have a number of different 
Um, so here, here, here are the different uh, colours that we use to code the nature of the different institutions, um, ranging from fully devolved to essentially um, uh, field units of, of the central government, uh, and then various degrees of autonomy in between. Um, and then we also have a basic uh, overview of the functional profile of, of, uh, of the different levels that tries to demonstrate, you know, how many, roughly speaking, overall, how many functions from the set of 50 that we look at are, are, are majority implemented by, by which levels of government. Um, and then, then we have on, on the website, again, a, a basic overview of, of, of country, uh, its subnational governance uh, structure, um, the nature of the institutions uh, and the functional assignments, uh, as I just mentioned. And if um, there's also a link to the full profile, um, which um, contains much more information and, and discussion um, to be um, you know, for, for, for people to look at if, uh, if, if that is uh, what you want to do, as well as links to, to several other resources outside of LPSA that, that you could look at as well. Um, so that's sort of just an example of, of, of where we're at on in terms of uh, what the assessment looks like and, and how it can be used. Sorry, sorry Nick, there's the, mm. Nicholas, there's a little bit of um, echo and uh, you, you, you've you started, your voice uh, level went down. So I don't know if you can get a bit closer to the mic and, and more loudly so mm -hmm. that everybody can hear you. <laughs> okay, I'll try my best. <laughs> um, so we, so far we've been working with um, a number of experts in each of the six countries where we're currently developing the, the intergovernmental profile. Uh, and we're hoping to finish uh, finish them all by by sort of uh, probably by the end of May. Um, so we have South Africa, as we've just seen, which is complete. Um, the Ethiopia profile is also uh, complete and uploaded to the website. And then we're also um, working on profiles in Uganda, Tanzania, Malawi, and Zambia, um, all of which are, are hopefully going to be complete fairly soon and, and uploaded to, to the website for, for, for your reading pleasure. Um, and so far we're seeing quite a, I'd say quite a diverse range of subnational governance characteristics across the different countries, quite a diverse um, set of, of, of different issues. So, so hopefully these assessments will, uh, all these profiles will, will culminate in an interesting comparative analysis um, and report on, on the sort of the state of governance institutions in, in the region. Um, we're also planning to commission a, a second batch of countries um, to, to apply the methodology in the near future, including uh, French speaking and other non-English speaking countries in the region, so that we get a more diverse range of, of country examples to feed into the comparative analysis. Um, and, and the sort of the longer term objective is of course to do a profile for every country in the world, um, which may take uh, you know two or three years to 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 do, but that that's the sort of target that we're that we're aiming for. Um, so so yeah, that's that's where we are at the moment. Um, I'll, I'll leave it there for now, as I know you have a, a limited time, um, but hopefully this provides a bit of a um, status update on on where we're at in terms of the logic and methodology in in the Africa region. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Nick. Uh, thanks for that excellent uh, overview. Very exciting project. And having uh, participated a little bit in the South African um, uh, uh, profile, uh, really, yeah, kudos to the team for setting it up the way it has, you know, with such an exciting but also difficult exercise to capture such a variety of, of countries and, 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 and contexts and legal frameworks and administrative cultures into uh, into a very logical and accessible um, framework. So um, yes, we really look forward to seeing further countries added to um, to, to the website. Um, so thanks very much for that. Let's then um, go back to the agenda and move over to the introduction. Yeah, sorry, and, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. There's a question for Nick in the chat. Right, let me just quickly open my chat. Uh, oh, there's a question for Nick, that's right. Um, Nick, do you want to 
briefly uh, respond to the question in the chat, if you can. Um, I'm just looking. Uh, okay. Is it the? Ah, okay. How do you handle the gap between? Digital... I think it's a question of Samantha. Uh -huh. How do you handle the gap between the de jure and de facto, or the difference between what local so level actual implementation of it in your coding? Yeah. So, so of course, the legal framework that exists in um, in the country will provide uh, the information on on the de jure situation, but we're we're trying to get, go beyond that and. And really capture what 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 is going on in reality. So, while the law may say that there may be fully devolved local governments, um, if in practice the local government cannot hire and fire its own officers or staff and has to get centralised approval from the Ministry of Local Government or the uh, equivalent ministry, or if the local government budget um, is actually included in the national level government budget or has um, you know, has to be approved in, in some other way or can be amended or adjusted by the central government, um, then clearly um, it's not a fully autonomous local government. And so we have a series of questions along this type where we ask the country expert to um, use their judgment and available evidence on the ground to, to sort of make an evaluative judgment on, on the extent of um, you know, uh, autonomy that the various entities at different levels have. And we have a, a, a decision tree type methodology in, in the manual, in the guidance that, that sort of tries to help the assessor um, in this exercise uh, of, of classifying the entity um, according to six or seven different types. Um, so there is... That, that's sort of how we approach it. And, and there's a lot more detail in, in the manual and, and accompanying tools um, which, which go through that. Um, I hope that's sufficient for now, but happy to discuss it separately as well, um, if helpful. Thanks. Thank you, Nick. And I think that's exactly what, what set this, um, this, this, this exercise apart from, from other exercises that, that we've perhaps been exposed to or seen that this really tries to capture both the the legal uh, institutional dimension as well as the practical dimension into into one framework. Um, so, um, so I think that really is is a remarkable feature of uh, of, of this tool. Um, and perhaps, yeah, as you as you suggest, Nick, if there are further questions, if people want to engage with you or offer assistance or sign up, I'm sure they can contact you or, or Jamie directly, and um, and then that can be uh, can be taken forward. Um, so thanks again, Nick. Very useful. Um, and then we can perhaps move on to the discussion uh, of um, of the of the uh, thematic uh, areas. So just a brief um, introduction, a, a word from from my side before we go into the separate uh, groups. Is that. Uh, as you may recall, in the last meeting on the 12th of January that many of you attended, we started having a discussion on, um, you know, what should we do with the, um, you know, the, the working group? How should we take it forward? What themes should we, uh, should we focus on and what should be our methodology? Uh, the question maybe is, you know, why, why do we do this? Why do we do this exercise? And I think it's really uh, a wonderful opportunity because um, you know this this working group and, and LPSA in general is um, is there, but and it, it provides us with the backup and the support uh, and even with some resources. Uh, but it's uh, it's flexible. It is up to us to give it shape uh, in our working group uh, and, and decide how we want to take it uh, take it forward. Um, so we have an opportunity to uh, to shape the work of uh, of the working group as it moves forward. Um, so I think that's that's really exciting, and uh, it's quite a flexible approach to to this uh, to this association. So I think that's that's much appreciated. Um, and so far, obviously, we don't come into this uh, with a completely blank slate because we have uh, we have had some discussions on the twelfth of January at our first meeting, um, and uh, we will try to sort of the, the the chairpersons of the subgroups will uh, will quickly recap. Uh, some of the main findings of, of those meetings and to sort of start us off. Um, but it may be good to just be reminded of, um, of the type of activities that, you know, LPSA and the working group 
generally sort of seeks to engage in, which is uh, knowledge development, knowledge sharing, and convening outreach and field building, uh, you know, developing knowledge products. Uh, you know, I think the Logica uh, profiles are a key example of that. Um, a newsletter, a webinars, online courses, uh, in obviously everything that you can find on, on the website, decentralization.net. Uh, and then a platform for outreach, research and academic outreach, and of course, the, the work of the, of the expert working group. So within that broad sort of umbrella of, of activities and methodology, there's lots of scope and, and space for us to shape what we do in this working group, uh, which is why we thought it's best to um, have a bit of a discussion on that in, um, in two, I think, if I'm correct, two breakaway groups that we're going to go into now. Uh, the one will be chaired by myself and, and Jane, uh, which would then be conducted in English. And the other working group uh, will be chaired by, by Carr, and uh, that one shall be conducted in French. And we have a broad outline and a bit of a, a guiding document in front of us that should, should have shaped the discussions as we are in the, in the working group. So we'll keep that on the screen. Uh, in the working groups. Um, and we hope that you have given it some thoughts before you came into the meeting um, in terms of what you would like the, the working group to focus on, what are your ideas uh, around geography, uh, splitting it up around geography, splitting it up around dimensions of decentralization or specific sectoral or other themes. There's lots of scope to, to work through those issues. So now I'm going to ask Astrid to apply her magic, uh, magic touch and with one strike of the button, uh, send us into our groups and hopefully that will all work out and I see already things happening on my screen. So hopefully we will see each other after the working group in plenary and um, enjoy the discussions and uh, we look forward to engaging with you in the plenary afterwards. Right, thanks everyone. All right, uh, just bear with me while I look through my papers to look for my agenda and find my bearings because we were so engrossed in discussions that I have to now switch to my other my other hats as a, as as chair of the of the plenary. And please, Car and and Jane, uh, um, help me if I'm uh, if I'm at a loss. Uh, so far, so good, I guess. Um, but here we are. Thanks so much, everyone, for what certainly in our group was a very lively, vibrant uh, discussion on yeah, what we think uh, ought to be the priorities or the approaches of, of, of the working group. I think it's been very, very useful. Uh, and thanks for, thanks for your patience and your participation. And thanks to Astrid for uh, managing us across the, across the plenary and the working groups. And it all went very smoothly. Uh, so no problems there. Um, so time is now to go into a quick sort of summary and Q and A um, of what we have discussed in the in the two working groups or the two subgroups. So yeah, um, Carl, could I could I ask you to give us a bit of a sense of what went on on your side of the globe or the continent or however we say it? <laughs> yes, definitely. Definitely. Um, I am going to manage to get everything on a slide here. So I am going to just share my slide. Um, we also had a good discussion with some really great ideas that um, were shared and um, uh, the different, the key themes that we came up with um that we thought could be discussed um during the rest of the year one was localizing sdgs and um not all 17 but focusing on some sgd sdgs um uh, another was local economic development and there was a specific uh a request on in our group on looking at blue economy by one person, but uh, the idea of local economic development and and looking at what decentralization is 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 adding as value to public goods um, for a country. 
um, especially economic development. Um, gender and decentralization was another point and um, people, uh, uh, there was also a suggestion that we could look at inclusivity as a whole, um, but ensuring that we have a specific discussion and that we don't we don't lump everything into one. Um, and then a lot of interests for intergovernmental relations, um, which seem to be coming uh, an impediment for decentralization. Um, and we talked a little bit about, you know, how to organize these themes, whether we needed to ensure that there was a regional focus um, when we discussed a, a theme. And our overall conclusion was it depends. It depends on the theme. Um, so some of the themes uh, like intergovernmental relations would not be region specific, whether with, whereas others like regional, uh, like gender, could have some regional specificities and topics like uh, local economic development or localizing SDGs um, could benefit from having experiences from more than one, uh, from one, more than one region. Um, and finally, our group also, um, we didn't just identify work, we identified people who could do some of the work. <laughs> um, and we got um, uh, Oliver, who is interested in um, local economic development, but would need to confirm uh, within his organization. Um, and Judy, who would be interested in working on localizing SDGs and we suggested that this work would be done um, by several people and so uh, it wouldn't be just one person working uh, on a theme. So that was our discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carl. Um, wow, you, you guys um, were organized. You already have a slide with even volunteers. That's, uh, you, you're putting me to shame as a, as a, as a chairperson. Uh, excellent work there. No, but, uh, but really fantastic. Thank you so much. Is there any questions on that or uh, observations or perhaps additions from the group members that we can take um, in, in the plenary? Please feel free to come in or any thoughts that you may have on um, on uh, I think what was group one, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, just a question, but from our group, uh, English group. Um, I was wondering when the French group uh, put volunteers there and they said they they want to do something. I just wanted to find out what did they want to do? Did they want to do studies? on these topics? Do they want to present their ideas on these topics? What is it exactly? Um, so maybe it can help us. Thank you, Nicholas. So we were not that organized. <laughs> um, <laughs> we, simply, um, we simply identified people who had some interest in working on the topic. And um, I, I think the, the, the general idea was that um, depending on the different topics, we would get a couple of volunteers who could then discuss more in detail as to what they wanted to do, produce a paper, um, uh, make a presentation, or maybe go more in depth with some aspect of studies. Yeah, but that's okay. open open for discussion. We did not get into those details. <laughs> Great, thank you. Thank you, Carl. Um, any other observations, inputs or questions? Just looking through my list and across the screen, if there's anyone who wants to come in, just uh, feel free to unmute yourself or raise your hand and you can take the floor. I'm in, uh, sorry, I'm on the move, uh, a bit noisy. I don't know, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. 
Okay. No, I was just going to say, I think that the topics were really interesting. Um, I think also when we think about, you know, particularly the, the gender one, uh, uh, for me, I often feel that in this, in this space of decentralization, uh, and when you talk about, you know, what policies look like from, from the gender perspective as well, and what the practice looks like is where we have quite a disconnect. So I, I'm also thinking, you know, the possibility for cross learning there is really interesting. I mean, I know in our group, we also talked a bit about what definitions, you know, what a definition is and what the practice actually is. Um, so I thought that these were some very interesting topics that the first group has come up with and just wanted to applaud. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Completely agree. Um, so that's that's great. Anyone else before we move over to the other group? Um, all right. Let me then try to give an overview of what went on in our group, and uh, and my co-chair Jane uh, will uh, will will help me out if I if I miss anything or or misrepresent what what has been said in the group. And of course, the group members themselves are all part of of this discussion. So we will. Uh, do the feedback together, but we had a very um, interesting and lively discussion on on a number of aspects um, that we thought could could feature in the agenda of of the working group. Um, I mean, the overall sort of theme of local government for service delivery, I think, I think loomed large. Uh, that ultimately the aim of local government must be to improve service delivery, basic services, um, you know, you know, to to communities. Um, Themes that were listed uh, included, for example, how to improve sustainability in a post-COVID area, uh, what the various modalities are that are in use or that are deployed across the continent in various contexts and countries and regions, um, you know, to essentially transfer funds to local government. There are so many practices out there, but also so many similarities, community development funds, uh, intergovernmental fiscal transfers, um, what are the, the 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 mechanisms for monitoring and evaluation of those grants, and how effective are they, uh, and how how much ownership is there of of those instruments and those modalities? Um, the point made that often they are conceived of and and and, and designed with you know, and I'm paraphrasing now, with a donor hand, or, or certainly you know through the perspective of the central government, and and not often. Through the perspective of the, you know, the recipient uh, local authorities, let alone, you know, the, the the communities that must ultimately benefit from from those um, from those funds. Um, you know, the, the point was also made that we really need to use this working group to to expand the use of of African expertise uh, for processes such as this. Um, that very much, I think. Often we see um, the expertise coming from from the global north, and and it doesn't always um, always land in the in the African context the way the way it ought to. Um, so diagnostic tools uh, for monitoring and evaluation, public finance management, uh, perhaps looking at specific uh, you know topics such as tax administration or, or property rates, and and looking and, and using those very specific tools. Uh, to 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 get a to get a, a better understanding of of how decentralization really works in the various countries that that we have because we also thought that you know doing very global global comparisons um you know is 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 quite a, a vast exercise and could also end up being quite theoretical but if you take a specific a neat sort of example of how does a country uh use property rating or tax administration to improve revenue at local level and taking into account the you know the, the the context for decentralization could give you a very good insight into 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 how things work. Um, so the intergovernmental fiscal framework, as you can as you can hear, was was quite prominent in our in our discussions. Uh, we were also sort of yeah a bit cautious about um, you know sort of uh, very being very rigid in in geographical uh, categories um, and and political categories. Um, and sort of emphasizing that they must be porous and, and, and flexible so that we don't get caught up in uh, in very rigid uh, categorizations. Um, cities were mentioned, and particularly, you know, how cities can be assisted also with, uh, you know, given their importance and, and, you know, the fact that they are sites of huge challenges, but also of huge opportunity. 
Um, and, and what are the innovations that are that are happening and that are possible? Um, example use, for example, was how, how can cities use artificial intelligence uh, to enhance their, their revenue mobilization? Um, so, so also some, some really interesting ideas um, coming across on, on, on our themes that we could that we could look into. Um, we also sort of came up in the end sort of with a bit of a sort of a, a thought that if we uh, if we talk about grouping um, you know themes and, and, and you know and grouping topics and we look at, at, at the you know grouping them by, by by geographical region or by dimension or by theme, what we could also look at is a grouping per sort of let's say style or, or method of decentralization or architecture of decentralization so that we can, um, you know, use that grouping to to develop ideas and and discussions that are really focused on, you know, uh, groups that or countries that have their broad decentralization architecture in common. Now, of course, that's very difficult because every country is different. But but we also linked it to the Logica framework, which is going to give us a bit of a map of where each country is at, or at, at least the countries that are part of the the, the Logica framework. Um, you know what their method and architecture and reality of of, of decentralization is, and maybe that could give us uh, also an, a, a sort of uh, a tool to to group countries and and refine our work so that we don't uh, you know speak to the whole continent with a particular theme, knowing full well that it that it lands completely differently differently in 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 countries that have a very different decentralization architecture. So maybe that could be a a method of nuancing our work, and then finally, you know, sort of the the the, the, the discussion about you know the you know the, the the concepts and definitions. You know, we we sort of you know as sort of so called experts, we quite glibly use terms such as decentralization and devolution, and but what does it really mean on the ground, and 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 what does it mean in in you know in our mother tongues, and and what is the relevance of it really for. Uh, for service delivery is uh, is also something that that was raised. So quite a rich, um, yeah, combination of of discussions uh, and uh, yeah. And unfortunately, I wasn't as as organized as as Car uh, having a slide ready for you. But I I do hope that you got the gist of of um, of what we discussed. And I will certainly obviously group uh, group this together and make. Um, uh, and, and and make the notes and share it with uh, with everyone, but that's where we we're at. Um, but Jane, um, please come in if 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 you want to add anything to what I yes. What I, just... I, I I think that's a really an excellent summary. And in trying to support my co-chair, I was trying to just jot things to make us look a little better. I have a, <laughs> sh a small slide that summarizes what oh, Jap has just said. If you read me, the day. My I save, I save our dream. If you read me, I can just share that just to summarize what Jeff has just put together. Hmm. Jane, you should be able to share now. Yes, there, there it is. I hope you can see it. Yeah. Can you, you can see it? Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Thank uh, you. I think this is not everything, I didn't exhaust everything, but this is sort of what uh, Japa summarized as the broader thematic areas that we could add to what was already there. That's it. This is super Wonderful. useful, thank yeah. you. Very yeah. nice, very nice. Thank you so much, Jane. See, Kai, we were also organized. I had no doubts. I had no <laughs> doubts at all. <laughs> All right, uh, but is there anyone who wants to uh, comment on this or ask a question or add an observation, um, just like we did in the previous group? Please uh, don't don't hold back. Um, yes, a bit. Um, I mean, if you look at um, the first presentation by Khan, uh, Ka, when their group talked about the local economic development, which in the current states of financial and economic crisis in Africa, who's coming, um, it means local economic development will become uh, a key focus of 
many governments. And I speak from the experience from Ghana's case, where the government for the past two years uh, have made local economic development a key instrument uh, to, you know, um, let's say promote or to turn the economy around and then to ensure job creation. Um, and this had transitioned from being an ideological thing where we, we had moved from let the state retreat and then the, the enabling environment approach where the local government were also doing the same enablement approach and nothing happened in terms of jobs creation at the local level. And now uh, the state is coming back and the local government are playing direct role. So post COVID, local economic development is going to be an important uh, issue for discussion. But then it also goes to the dem sustainability issue because then they, they need partnership to get to this local economic development. So, I think if you tie the fiscal decentralization part and the local economic development, then there's a kind of uh, a fine blend um, between these two uh, uh, themes. And, and is we can take this, these two together um, along. Now, back to my earlier question, when Kat discussed the volunteers. So it can be, uh, research findings, it, it can be synthesis of available findings, it can be advocacy activities taking place in countries, it can be policy issues taking place in countries. Um, but then do we organize it along geographic groups, which our group tend to say maybe not? Um, and so perhaps um, we need to discuss in this last moment or the last minute, Geographical, how is the organization going to be? Because in, in the January meeting, I think with this, the reason why these geographical issues came um, was that we could organize sub uh, groups or meetings which need not bring all of us together, but let's say West Africa group or Southern African group having short meetings or thematic focus issues uh, that may not be necessary of interest to, let's say, North Africa or Central Africa. So that was how these grouping things came. Um, we need to, I, I think we need to have a, a better discussion on this grouping. Is it grouping based on themes or grouping based on geography? Thanks, Nicholas. I, th I think that's a very important point um, yes. and um, I'm, I'm certainly not in a position to uh, you know give a definitive answer to to your question but my, my first hunch would be that I would imagine that the one doesn't exist the other and I, I would I would think that it would be fantastic if if under the broad auspices of this working group um, you know further uh, geographically organized meetings take place uh, I would imagine that 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 would be that would be wonderful if they could feed into into the working group, but don't necessarily have to always involve, uh, you know, sort of the the, the skeleton quarterly uh, meeting of 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 the working group. Um, I would be very much in favor of you know us being very open to to having that kind of geographical subgroupings uh, happening. Um, and at the same time, what I'm also hearing from the two groups is uh, quite a lot of interest in yeah in specific themes in in specific themes as they affect. Um, you know um, the various countries uh, that that are involved in this initiative and uh, and how it lands in their particular decentralization context. Um, so yeah, this is my first response to it. But um, I don't know if there's yeah. anyone else who who has a, a view, or maybe I'm not making any sense. Please call me out if that's the case. Um, and maybe there's also comparative. Um, Observations from other working groups elsewhere on the globe, uh, Jamie. I don't know if they if, if there are existing practices elsewhere that we can learn from in terms of how to do this. Every global region is unique, yeah, uh, and I think uh, you should organize as as the working group sees fit. But I, I certainly think you could potentially do kind of 
uh, subgroups and, and opportunities to meet in a sub-regional basis, as well as on a thematic basis as, as the team wishes. Because obviously the, the the beauty of of this vehicle is that we have um, yeah we we have the support uh, obviously you know a lot limitless uh, because LPSA is also an organization with limited uh, capabilities but yeah you you can draw on the support uh, of of the team to um, to organize and, and and make things happen um, but of course we need some yeah need some sort of coherence in the end and how it all comes together and feeds into the broader agenda of, of the working group. Um, any other views on this? You know, knowing full well that we will not be able to, to exhaust everything and, and, and make firm decisions here right now, um, I think that the three co-chairs will also, yeah, we'll also put our heads together and just mull over uh, all the suggestions that have been made and, and hopefully get back to you with the uh, yeah, with a with a clear response. Um, but I think so far what I've heard is all very, very relevant and, and useful. Anyone else with uh, with an input? Just to mention, yeah, that there's some comments in the chat. Right. Um, Paddy is uh, suggesting on grouping issues, I think. Uh, but basically, um, uh, on a thematic basis, and, and reaching out to volunteers on the thematic basis. Um, I would also want to point out that um, for right now, um, in this meeting, we, we, we don't have a very balanced uh, regional attendance. So we are very top heavy in, um, in East Africa, uh, and uh, not so many uh, people attending from West uh, or Central. I think there's uh, maybe, um, and, and, and even from Southern. So we might want to, or Northern, I think those all have maybe one, one participant each. So I think it might be interesting to start off uh, on a thematic grouping and, and sharing experiences and thoughts across regions. And then seeing as we grow, if we have enough participation and also if there is a, a need, um, because I think if we have regional groups, um, we there should be like, what is driving the regional group? Are we feeling there's a particular theme that's of interest to a region or a particular approach that's of interest to a region. So I think as those come up, we may need to, to we may see the need for regional groups and uh, we might not have all of them at the same time. Um, if, we, if we have a region that has significant representation and has uh, significant points to discuss, then, um, they can they can decide to so I, so I would suggest let's go for themes for the time being because we have so many people who have uh, expressed clear interest in the themes and then uh, regions as the interest develops. Perhaps maybe one small suggestion from my side. What. Um, what I think the Asia uh, working group is doing that may be helpful for this, which is rather than formally disaggregating into subgroups, is that um, the working group as a whole rotates a topic through each meeting so that, say, next quarterly meeting, part of the meeting will be to highlight the cutting edge in uh, gender. And the next one, there will be a discussion uh, focus on um, you know, fiscal or local economic development, so that you keep the coherence of the overall working group and you will learn from each other's experiences. Um, and, and that may be done in, in the regular quarterly meetings or part of the quarterly meetings, or it may be that you then, as part of your discussion in each quarterly meeting, decide to do a separate round table on the subtopic. But that way it's, it's uh, kind of fluidly managed. Um, just my, uh, just an experience uh, shared from Asia. Thanks, Jamie. That that makes a lot of sense. Um, Patty's got a hand up, and I think we slowly need to move towards the end of the discussion because I did promise to not yeah. keep us much longer than an hour and a half. So over to you, Patty. 
Yeah, thanks, Yap. And I was just listening in um, as the group composition because I, I think, and I, and I put another question in the chat asking how many people are actually registered to the platform. Uh, because I think that, that that one is a determinant. I mean, of course, people may not all be able to attend meetings, but they may be able to feed into the outputs from the meeting minutes and so on. So since this discussion today has taken care or at least has gone some uh, mile in terms of putting together some generic ideas uh, that could then be shared across and then see whether there is actually a regional interest, right? Uh, and, and sometimes I think we say regional, but actually what we mean is probably a country perspective um, because often people would say a region and then they would end up zooming into a country. Um, so maybe ticking off some country interests and then that sort of steers um, uh, discussions on the groups. I think um, the, the last suggestion that was made by Jamie is really interesting, but sometimes what I what I think with groups like this where we have floating discussions is that then the momentum of having the same group. So if gender is the topic, uh, you may have people who don't work around gender sort of falling off the, the radar and you would like everybody to sort of be engaged. But would there be a moment where you still allow, um, you know, you still have these small groupings that go and can have sub meetings and meet every so often. And then when we come to the quarterly meeting, you actually have, because you could be part of the gender, but also part of the localization. Uh, also look at diagnostic, look at, you know, um, financing. So depending on where you're interested, but we have the one meeting that you do month uh, quarterly, as I understand, bringing us all together around the different things uh, rather than centering one meeting around the thematic area. So we don't lose um, the momentum of having actually to meet around, uh, you know, the bigger topic, which is decentralization, obviously. So just a suggestion as well, and maybe uh, an approach. Thank you. Thanks, Patty. And, and that's, yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And that's, that's pretty much how we also organize this meeting, you know, bring, bringing you together in, in, in one meeting and then, and then subdividing you in, in subgroups. This time around, it was just to, to, to solicit inputs on, on priorities. But of course, we can use the same mechanism to um, to disaggregate into a number of of themes that would uh, that will be discussed, but then still keep the yeah keep the group together in one event, and, and obviously have one or two plenary aspects um, to going to yeah do not lose the momentum of of having this this group together. Um, right, um, note from Carla: subgroups and breakout rooms and different themes. Yeah, exactly. I, I completely agree with you, Carla. So I think I think some very interesting and, and, and practical ideas uh, emerging from what we're discussing. Um, and I think, you know, if with your permission, if it's okay with you, um, I would want to suggest that that uh, the three uh, co-chairs, um, yeah, we just put our heads together and, and, and come back to you with a, yeah, with, with a practical sort of response on how we want to take the next meeting forward and, and how we consolidate the ideas in, in, in the most sort of pragmatic way. Um, but I think this has been extremely useful. I've, I've learned so much from, from engaging with all of you. Um, and I think it gives us uh, really some, some nice insight into yeah, what, what's the, the heartbeat of, of, uh, of decentralization in all your various contexts. And, and we will try our level best to do justice to that in, uh, in the way we, we take the group forward. Um, but we do want to yeah uh, keep keep these meetings uh, fairly short so that we don't it doesn't become an intimidating uh, exercise to attend a working group meeting uh, or that we you know we keep it quite uh, quite to we keep to our time and, in, and we're already a little bit over time. I also learned that some people joined us uh, late because th there may have been some confusion around the uh, the time zones. Uh, so yeah, so really sorry about that, but I hope that next time around, we will we'll have you all from, from the beginning of the meeting. Um, so is there any last sort of inputs on, on this topic before we, before we go towards our closure? I just don't want to deprive anyone who still wants to come in. Um, see, I don't see any any further hands? So uh, let's then, yeah, let's then bring it to a close with the last item being sort of the last sort of uh, matters arising or any other business and, and next steps. Um, can I also quickly abuse this platform to market uh, the African School for Decentralization that will be hosted in Addis Ababa in September? 
uh, a call for, for applicants was circulated. It's a two-week course for practitioners on decentralization that um, we host uh, at the Dalla Omar Institute together with Addis Ababa University. So if you are interested or you know people that could benefit from attending that certificate course on decentralization, please uh, look out for that call for proposals or check in with me. Uh, we uh, we are really welcoming uh, applicants to um, to participate, and um, and that's a very that's a wonderful uh, two week course um, that that is um, yeah that is organized by us and and also partly funded by us. So it's a great opportunity, particularly for young practitioners. So um, that was quickly my my own little pitch. Um, but um, yeah, what I wanted to say, sort of in closure, is um, that. Um, we we really invite you to spread the word um, about this network and about the LPSA and and people that that may still want to join us. Uh, membership is free and easy to organize, um, so please spread the word. Um, we're also busy, um, you know, getting further administrative and coordinating support for for the working groups, including ours. So so that's in the offing. So um, uh, watch that space. Um, that all adds to the, the functionality and the efficiency of, of how we can organize these meetings. Uh, we will also be able at some point to, you know, to, to, to dedicate some funds to the work that we do. There's a very small budget that we will be able to, um, uh, to use to do some of the work. Um, we had, as co-chairs, uh, decided to use the funds to go on a, on a shopping spree in Cape Town, but Jamie said that that's not the idea. Um, so, uh, no, all that's all in jest, uh, I'm just kidding. That was never the idea. It really is, the plan is to, uh, to use those funds to, um, to really implement the, the, the work that this working group suggests. So, and we really wanted to wait for ideas from your side on, on how we can, uh, how we can take that forward, but, uh, but watch that space, uh, so that we can, uh, we can, we can, uh, uh, make use of of the resources that LPSA um, has has gathered for us. Um, so share the news of also of of your own events and uh, initiatives that you want to be shared in LPSA. Um, let Myrna or Astrid know um, of of anything that you want to be um, included in the website or, or circulated. Uh, that's what the LPSA is for. Um, I want to thank everyone who came to today's meeting. Wonderful to see all of you, uh, at least virtually here on the screen, um, and, and I hope to see you at, at the next meeting. Thanks to Jamie, thanks to Astrid, thanks to Myrna, also thanks to my co-chairs, um, um, co Jane and Ka, uh, thanks for your support. And then lastly, we have the next meeting scheduled for the 20th of July, uh, in, and then another meeting scheduled for the 19th of October. So we will have four meetings. This was the second one. So the next one is on the 20th of July, and the further one is then on the 19th of October. And we then undertake um, to, um, to get back to you before then. Uh, with sort of our observations and, and ideas for the way forward for particularly those last two meetings, how we can take all those um, wonderful ideas that you've suggested uh, forward in those. So let me see if my coaches want to come in and say something to wave us goodbye, Carl or Jane, anything from your side? No, thank you so much, Yap, and thank you everybody for attending and uh, contributing. It was a great meeting. Also, thank you for me. I think this my I, I didn't attend the meeting in January. So this was a new experience for me. And thank you, everyone. Maybe next time I look forward to just, I don't know how we can see on the screen where people are from, but those who are from Nairobi, let's maybe say chat each other and see how we can bring more life and bring the Kenyan vibe to this whole platform. Thank you so much and see you next time. Bye. Wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day further and uh, let's stay in touch and we'll see you at the, at the next meeting or before then. Bye, everyone. Bye.